The National Literacy and Numeracy Learning Progressions are designed to support learning of the F-10 Australian curriculum in all learning areas. English plays an important role in the development of literacy knowledge and skills, and likewise mathematics is foundational to numeracy. But successful student engagement in all learning areas requires the development of discipline-specific literacy and numeracy knowledge and skills. Many schools across Australia are doing great work to improve literacy and numeracy outcomes for their students. These progressions are intended to be a resource that can be used at a whole school, teaching team or individual teacher level. There's no one approach to teaching and learning, but this diagram aims to show how the learning progressions can be used in the four phases of the teaching cycle. The top left quadrant focuses on you identifying what students already know and can do. The top right focuses on what you want students to learn. The bottom right quadrant focuses on how your students will learn the content and the bottom left quadrant on how you will know when your students have learnt it. It's important to note that the learning area content and achievement standards continue to be your focus for planning, programming, teaching, learning and assessment in relation to the Australian curriculum. The learning progressions don't tell you what to teach. The progressions provide a detailed map of how students become increasingly sophisticated in particular aspects or threads of literacy and numeracy development. The four outer boxes of the diagram outline how you may use the literacy and numeracy learning progressions in relation to each phase. So let's look at the top left box. The progressions can help you locate the current literacy or numeracy development of each of your students and what literacy or numeracy learning should follow. At the top right, when you're thinking about what content you want students to learn, think about the literacy or numeracy skills required to learn that content. What are the relevant threads of the literacy or numeracy progression? At the bottom right, Depending on the particular literacy or numeracy skills required by the content, think about the literacy or numeracy support that is needed to enable each of your students to access the content. At the bottom left, when you're assessing the learning, have you been explicit about the features of the literacy or numeracy skills you expect to be demonstrated by your students? And when you've completed assessment, can you give more explicit feedback to students about how they can improve? To help you make judgments, there are a few points about the structure of the learning progressions that I want to explain. Each progression has three elements and a number of threads under each element. The threads represent the important components of literacy or numeracy development as shown in the available evidence and research. Each thread includes descriptions of what a student says, does or produces at increasing levels of sophistication. Each description is called an indicator. The indicators are grouped together to form a level. Each thread has as many levels as can be supported by evidence. Some threads have five levels, others have many more. Each level has one or more indicator and is more sophisticated than the preceding level. The indicators within a level are not hierarchical or ordered. Some threads may be typically achieved by most students in the first few years of schooling. Others may begin and continue developing through to year 10. At this stage in the development of the progressions, there's no levelling across threads. Level A in one thread does not necessarily equate to level A in another thread. Research tells us that there's a wide range of literacy and numeracy development in most classrooms. The amount of time it takes each student to move through each level will vary. Some levels within a thread may develop very quickly for most students and other levels may develop over a number of years. As learning is very rapid in the early years of school and there is more available research, the initial levels can be more detailed than the later levels. So when you're using the progressions, do not see the indicators as a checklist. When you make a judgment, do so because the overall picture created by the group of indicators at a level are the best match for the student you're considering. When you're using the progressions, remember that the point of the trial is for you to give us feedback on how useful the progressions are in helping you to locate students. 
If the indicators are unclear or seem to be missing important student behaviours, please note these gaps and let us know when you complete the feedback survey. Don't forget, the feedback survey must be completed by the 31st of March. Thank you so much for your participation.